Let's talk about the advanced beneficiary notice, what it is, when to issue it, who can use it, and so on. So guys, if you don't know me, my name's Tony Maritato. I'm a licensed physical therapist and private practice owner, and I'm using this channel to help get information out, share ideas, with other clinicians, PTs, OTs, and SLPs. If you're not already a member of our group, we have a free group on Facebook, uh, the Medicare billing group for mostly cash-based PT, OT, SLP, go check it out. But today I wanna talk about the advanced beneficiary notice. This is a Medicare form. It is not a form that a therapist creates on their own. It is a prefabricated form published by Medicare, go to the CMS, uh, do a Google search and you'll find the form. In fact, I'll put a link to the form where you can download it in the description of this video. So the advanced beneficiary notice is really issued in two cases. There is what's called the mandatory uh, advanced beneficiary notice and there's an optional, um, <laughs> an optional advanced beneficiary notice. It used to be called a voluntary ABN, now it's an optional ABN. The optional ABN would be something that is used in cases where a service is gonna be delivered that's never a covered service or it's statutorily excluded. So for example, if I have a Medicare beneficiary in the clinic and I'm doing Medicare covered therapeutic exercise and therapeutic activity for a specific diagnosis, but that patient wants to also do some golf performance. The classic example I always share is, uh, a patient who might have Parkinson's disease, they might have difficulty walking, they might have some stiffness through the knees, the hips, the back. Um, they might be on an active physical therapy plan of care receiving Medicare covered services, but they might also have a goal of playing golf or even just, you know, putting a little bit around the green. And so while in the same session, I could do 40 minutes of Medicare covered therapeutic activities and exercise, I can also deliver 20 minutes of self pay golf performance training. If I'm gonna do that, I can issue a voluntary or an optional ABN so that I can use it as a courtesy to inform the client. These are the covered services. These are the non covered services. This is the cost of these services. When I'm using an optional ABN, I do not ask the patient to choose one of the options in the middle of the form. I do not have the patient sign the form. I simply use it as a way to inform them about the cost. Now let's talk about the mandatory ABN. The mandatory ABN is what most of us are probably familiar with. This might be a situation where you receive a physical therapy referral, you develop your plan of care, the patient completes the plan of care, meeting the established goals, but the patient wants to continue to work with you because you have a great relationship, you have good rapport, the patient wants to go from where they are to where they wanna be. And so you would issue a mandatory ABN to indicate the services you're delivering now are no longer medically necessary. The patient has already completed the physical therapy plan of care. You would indicate the services you're gonna provide. Maybe you're gonna do some manual therapy, some proprioceptive training, some neuro re-ed, you would include the costs and on a mandatory ABN, the patient would choose between three options. Option one is to have you submit the claim and allow Medicare to issue a ruling. Option number two is for you not to submit the claim and simply collect payment at the time of service. And option number three would be the patient doesn't wanna receive the service. They're not gonna pay for the service. Um, I've never seen option three chosen, but if the patient chooses option number one, you would deliver the service. The patient would pay you, preferably at the time of service. You would submit a claim for the services. Uh, you would include one of four appropriate modifiers for the, uh, to indicate to Medicare that there is an advanced beneficiary notice in place. You have the patient sign the form. I like to give the patient a copy of the form. I keep a copy of the form in my chart, in my medical record. A copy of the form does not go to Medicare. You simply code the claim with an appropriate modifier. There's four modifiers to choose from. So utilizing the advanced beneficiary notice is only appropriate for therapists that are contracted with Medicare. If you have no affiliation, if you're a cash PT and you have no affiliation with Medicare, you do not get the benefit of using the advanced beneficiary notice. The advanced beneficiary notice is also not a way to avoid the mandatory claim submission law if you are delivering an otherwise covered service. 
So if you want more information, if you want to go straight to the so source, go check out, and I'll put the links in the article below, CMS chapter 15, CMS chapter 30, section 50, and CMS chapter 40, chapter 40, or I'm sorry, CMS chapter 15, section 40, because that is where you'll get information about the mandatory claim submission law, who's allowed to opt out of Medicare, and even if you um, do not submit a claim because of HIPAA privacy laws, which are still open to interpretation when it comes to this, you're still not allowed to charge the Medicare beneficiary more than the allowed amount would have been. So I've got other videos on these topics. Go to the source, find the original uh, information, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.